Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what we're gonna do is we're going to apply Gauss's law to calculate a couple things. Uh, we want to calculate the net electric flux going through this uh, rectangular shaped prism that I have here drawn. And the other thing I want to do is I want to use Gauss's law in order to help me calculate how much charge is actually located inside that closed surface, that rectangular prism. All right, if you're just getting started with Gauss's law, this might be the type of problem you might look at. Uh, so we're gonna see how do you apply it. And again, if you have any questions, shoot me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's go. Okay, so to first apply Gauss's law, we have to remember what Gauss's law is, right? The Gauss's law basically says that the net flux and the electric flux here is equal to this kind of integral over here. Sometimes it's an integral sign with a circle. Sometimes they put an S over here and the value of the integral is the electric field uh, scalar product. You have to integrate that over the entire closed surface. That's what that means over here. Okay, and if you do that properly, that has to be equal to how much charge is enclosed and divided by a constant, epsilon zero, the permittivity of free space. So how are we going to apply this to this type of problem? Okay, so I have to give you first a closed surface because that goes into the definition of Gauss's law. So what we have here is a rectangular prism. I've given you the length of each side. So uh, this surface over here is going to be a square. Uh, we have that the height here is 0 0.4 meters and the width is 0 0.4. Uh, the length now is given by the letter C, and that's going to be 0 0.6 meters. Now, the other thing I'm going to have to give you is, what is the electric field in space over here? So the electric field for this particular problem, I'm going to assume that it's only in uh, the x direction. However, I'm going to give it a functional form. It could be a constant. We're going to make things a little bit harder for us here. We're going to assume that the electric field is given by this, 3x plus... 2x squared. All right, that's gonna be the formula. And again, it's only going to be in one direction. So I'm gonna give it the direction in the i hat direction, which uh, denotes the x direction. Okay, so this is kind of the problem statement. Now let's go back to our two problems and see how we set it up to calculate what is the net electric flux uh, through this uh, prism and how do you calculate this charge enclosed? All right, so let's go to the next page and set this up. All right, so let's first start with uh, the left-hand side of Gauss's law, which is this integral over a closed surface. And the closed surface is nothing more than the surface of my rectangular prism. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, you can basically split this up. Integrating over a closed surface means we're gonna integrate over each surface of this rectangular prism. So let's start by defining them. Uh, let's try just using a marker over here. So the surface S1 is going to be the surface here that's uh, all the way on the left-hand side. We're going to call this S1. Uh, surface S2 is going to be on the other side. And then we can go ahead and label the four other surfaces. Uh, S3, for example, the front surface of this prism. Uh, S4, the bottom. S5, the back surface. And the top surface, let's call this S6. Okay, so an integral over a closed surface, I can now simply write it as the sum of all the integral over individual surfaces. Okay, so that's going to simplify things a lot. It might not look like it because now I have six terms to evaluate, but we're going to see that a lot of those terms are going to be equal to zero. So again, I have, I have to integrate the electric field over the area of each one of those surfaces. And this is going to continue. I really have six terms over here. I'm not gonna write them all because they all look the same. So you just have to realize they're integrating over different surfaces. Now, let's have a look at a few of those surfaces. Let's have a look, for example, at the surface S3, all right? Which is the front surface over here of this rectangular prism, all right? This is the surface that I'm interested in. And it has an area vector that is pointing out of the page. Right, because the area vector points perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so for this particular case, actually, let me write this down. So for uh, the surface S3, what we have is the area vector, or dA, 
as a vector it simply has a magnitude dA, but its direction, if you look, its direction is out of the page. That's what we're going to call the k hat direction. Okay. And now if I was going to evaluate how much flux is actually going through this front surface, well, again, the whole term that you have to evaluate is S3. It's what is the electric field along that surface. Now notice the electric field here changes everywhere on the surface. It's the scalar product with the area. Now this scalar product here, you can simplify it, right? Because you have to integrate over the entire area. The way you simplify a scalar product, it's the magnitude of one field. It's the magnitude of uh, the other vector multiplied by cos of the angle between both of those vectors. However, look at what we have. We have an electric field which is always along the x direction. That's given by this term right here. And what we have is an area vector dA, which is going to be in this direction over here. Right, that's what we found. dA is along the z direction. So that means that the angle between both of those vectors is always 90 degrees. If that's the case, that means that this integral right here has to be equal to zero because the angle here is 90 degrees and cos of 90 gives me zero. So that simplifies our life quite a bit. You're gonna notice that you're going to get the same thing for S4, for S5, and S6. All of these terms, there is no electric flux going through any of these surfaces because of this scalar product right here. Because for each one of these, we're going to have theta equals to 90 degrees, and therefore you don't have to consider it. So that really simplifies what our total electric flux is because we don't have any of these terms anymore. We're only left with two terms, this one and this one. All right, so let's first start with this first term here. So we're gonna be integrating over uh, this area over here. Okay, so we have to define all the terms. Uh, first thing you wanna know is what is the electric field everywhere on the surface over here? So at the surface S1, what you have is that the value of X everywhere for the surface is simply equal to A and it's equal to 0 0.4. So what does that mean for the electric field? Well, the electric field expression is right there. So that means that everywhere on the surface, the electric field, since it only depends on X, it has the same value. So you can just substitute in the value here, 0 0.4 plus two, and this is 0 0.4 squared. Now again, this is a vector quantity and that's going to be the direction of the vector. Uh, so what you could do now is just substitute that inside your calculator and you're going to find a magnitude of 1.52. Uh, that's in newtons per coulomb and the direction is going to be in the i hat direction. All right, so that's what we need. And the other term that we need is this area vector. Well, what is the area vector? The area vector is basically a vector that points in a direction that is perpendicular, right? So I can write it as something like this. Now, if you write it down as a vector, it looks like this. It has a magnitude. The magnitude is simply dA, and the direction of that vector is, well, it's opposite of the electric field, right? I would say it's in the minus i hat direction. So if you want to write that kind of neatly, maybe just put the negative in the front, uh, dA and i hat. All right, that's how you write the vector. Okay, so we have our two terms here, and now we want to evaluate those inside the integral. Now it turns out to be pretty simple because the electric field is uniform everywhere along the surface. So that means that anything that's a constant, you can basically take it out. So let's go ahead and evaluate this first integral term. So I'll write it down first, S1, uh, E dot dA, something like this. Now we substitute in all the vectors. So I wanna integrate over the entire area S1 and I have my magnitude, which is 1.52 multiplied by i hat. And that will become a scalar product with the other vector. The other vector is going to be, well, let me open up a square bracket here, negative dA. And that is multiplied by i hat. <laughs> okay, so let's factor out the constant term. The constant term is that magnitude of the electric field over here. This is 1.52, and I want to integrate now. There's a negative in the front that comes out. Uh, that just comes from this term over here. 
and the left, what I'm left with here is uh, DA S1, and I have an I hat dot I hat. Okay, well, I hat dot I hat, you should remember that one. That is simply equal to one, so you don't have anything to worry about for that one. That's very, very easy. So let's just kind of eliminate that term. That's just the one, just erase it. And all I'm left with now is simply integrating over the entire area, right? The constant electric field magnitude left. So what we're left with now is just the integral over the area is just the area, right? Or the integral over that surface simply gives me the area. So at the end, we're left with minus 1.52 and multiplied by the area of this surface. The area of that surface is going to be the height multiplied by the width. Uh, that's A multiplied by B. Okay, and both of those are the same value since it's a square surface. So at the end, you get minus 1.52, uh, 0 0.4 squared. And we're left with that this first term right here, uh, at the end of the day, uh, this will give me negative... Uh, 0 0.2432. Okay, and that'll be in units of, well, whatever the electric flux units are. For now, I'll just write it as uh, the electric field units, which are newtons per coulomb, and multiplied by meters squared. Okay, so that is this first term that we've just evaluated. Now the second term we're going to do in a similar fashion. The only difference is, is that the electric field has to be evaluated at a different position. Right, the electric field now has to be evaluated at this position instead of the first surface. So let's set that one up. All right, so now we're interested in uh, the second term over here. It has a similar form. And the surface that I am really want to integrate over is this one, right? The other side of my prism. So that surface is at a different position and it has a different area vector, right? I have to integrate over this entire area right here. Uh, what else? Well, we also have that the surface is located at a distance of one meter from the origin over here, right? That's the distance over here. That's the value X. So when you actually calculate what is the magnitude here at this position where X equals to one meter, that's the position of the surface, which you're going to end up getting is, well, uh, three times one plus two times one squared, and everything still is in the I hat direction. So that simply gives me five, right? Five newtons per coulomb. And again, it's in that direction. That's our electric field. So actually, if you plot the electric field right here, you should have it in this direction here. All right, so what are we left with? Uh, we have to find what is this area vector over here. So the area vector should be equal to the magnitude and multiplied by the direction. Notice it is now parallel to the electric field. So that's going to simplify this term. So at the end, this is what our integral looks like. So we have the integral over S2 of the electric field, scalar product with the area vector. Okay, uh, what we're left with here is simply going to be 5. S2, we have our vector 5, that's the electric field, and scalar product with dA and i hat. Let me have another pair of brackets over here. You see the five I can take out of that integral because it's constant. And I have an i dot i term. This is simply also reduces to one, just like I had before. And what you're left with is simply the integral over the surface. And that's it. And that is simply five multiplied by the surface. That surface is again, a times b, right? So we have five multiplied by 0.4. And since it's a square surface, it's 0 0.4 again. Uh, so that means that this second term here uh, gives me a value of 0 0.8. Again, in the same un units, newtons per coulomb uh, multiplied by meters squared. We now go back to our first question, calculate the net electric flux. Well, we did quite a lot of work here. So the net electric flux, again, reduced to this, adding both of those two terms together. That's all we have. So the first one was negative, right? The integral over the field in that area, 0 0.2432. And plus the second term, we had 0 0.8. So at the end, our net electric flux um, should give me 0 0.557. Again, newtons per coulomb, meters squared. Okay, that is question one. That was quite a lot of work. Question two is a lot easier.
right? Calculate the charge inside the closed surface. Well, for that, all you have to do now is simply apply Gauss's law to this problem. All right, Gauss's law, remember, stated that if you know the net electric flux through a closed surface, that is simply equal to the amount of charge that's enclosed divided by a constant. This is a permittivity of free space. You just looked that up in your textbook. So to find the total charge enclosed, all you do is just bring this on the other side. And you can right away just write down that the total charge enclosed is going to be equal to the total flux going through that closed surface multiplied by epsilon zero. So that's it. We're off to the races now. So you write our total flux, which is zero point roughly five, five, seven, if I round that and multiplied by the permittivity of free space. You look that one up in the textbook, 8.85 times uh, 10 to the negative 13. Again, all of this is in SI units, so we're good. You carry out that multiplication in the calculator and you should get something that is approximately uh, 4.93 times 10 to the negative 12, and that is measured in coulombs. So that is how much charge is enclosed in that surface. And we used Gauss's law in order to find this. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this problem, folks. Hopefully you can carry out the steps now. Okay, notice some of the simplifications. In many of those surfaces, the flux going through that surface is zero because the area vector and the electric field are perpendicular to each other. And we were able to simplify the problem as to integrating over only two surfaces of this rectangular prism. All right, thanks for watching, folks.